Hello everyone, my name is Gravity, and welcome to my box where I talk about things. So, I just watched the Netflix original movie Arlo the Alligator Boy. I saw a few previews of it on Netflix after my three-year-old would finish watching The Penguins of Madagascar several times in a row. And I really liked the animation, the design of the characters, and the music, so I gave it a watch. And it was so close to being absolutely amazing. But it was just okay. Everything I saw in the preview of this movie made me believe that it was going to be a hidden gem of a movie. But alas, it was just good. So what was good about it and what just made it okay? First, the story. So the movie is about an alligator boy named Arlo traveling to New York City to find his long lost father. And along the way, he meets some wacky characters that soon become his best friends. The characters, Arlo Beauregard, the alligator boy, Edme, Arlo's adopted mother, Birdie, a big teenage human giantess, Alia, I think is her name, uh, a tiger girl, Floricia, a pink flamboyant furball-like creature, Marcellus, a fish creature with legs, teeny tiny Tony, a rodent-like creature who is Italian, rough and Stucky, the swamp hillbillies trying to hunt down Arlo, and the beast. Arlo is the typical happy-go-lucky, optimistic character that is naive and a bit ignorant to how the world works around him. He was abandoned as a baby in the New York City sewers, and Baby Moses style, he floats his way from the sewers to the Louisiana Bayou, where he grew up in isolation from the rest of the world with his adoptive mother, Edme, for 15 years. Arlo is a boy who loves to sing about having more, and that he wants more, and that he knows that he can have more you get the point. He's a Disney princess, wanting more than this provincial life. Edme confesses to Arlo that she found him floating in the swamp one day and told him that his father was in New York City. So in an attempt to find himself and where he belongs, Arlo sets off to find his father in New York City. I have to say that I do like that he's searching for his father and not his mother. I feel like a lot of children looking for long lost parent stories are often a child searching for their mother, and a missing father just means that he ran off or abandoned the family and it's not worth looking for. But more on the abandoning thing in a minute. The first character that Arlo meets on his journey is Birdie, a very large girl who saves Arlo from the hillbillies rough and stucky, trying to hunt him down. I was really interested in Birdie as a character. Who is she? Why is she alone? What is her story? I loved her design and her voice, and I could not wait to learn more about her. However, the movie does not delve any deeper into Birdie's story, other than she is different, and because she was different, she has to be alone, and she sings a really pretty song about the ocean, and that was it. And the fact that that was all they revealed about her hurt my soul. I wanted to know so much more about this Valkyrie angel. The next two strange characters that Arlo runs into are Floricia, a pink flamboyant furball-like creature, and Teeny Tiny Tony, a tiny Italian man with a rodent-like tail. They were running a wrestling scam. Floricia almost throws the fight and then springs back to destroy her opponent after Teeny Tiny Tony takes bets. However, they're caught cheating and trying to take off of the money, and Arlo and Birdie get caught up in the kerfuffle. The duo's getaway driver, Aaliyah, a tiger girl, and the poster child for ADHD pulls up in their bus and they all get away. Arlo tries to convince everyone to go to New York with him, but they won't take him unless he frees one of their other friends from an aquarium. So Arlo frees Marcellus, a fish creature with legs, from his aquarium prison, and they are off to New York City. They arrive in New York, there's a montage of everyone doing touristy New York stuff, and after that, Arlo almost immediately finds his father, or at least finds out who he is. Ansel Beauregard, Arlo's long lost father, is an extremely wealthy business tycoon. He seems like a genuine person who wants to do good, but also seems unsure of himself. And I could not tell if it was a facade of a scummy businessman trying to appeal to the everyman, or if he was legitimately being genuine. Turns out he was legitimately being genuine. 
but he denied being Arlo's father because Ansel is a regular human being and Arlo is an alligator boy. He denies being his father, but sends him off with some advice that to get ahead in life, he would have to change himself. Crest said his father wants nothing to do with him. Arlo regroups with his misfit friends who encourage him to reach out to his father again. So Arlo and his friends crash a party his father is hosting and there is a heartfelt song between Arlo and Ansel. But before there can be true closure and emotional growth between Arlo and his father, the hillbillies burst in and capture Arlo with the beast. Now let's talk about the beast. It was played up to be this horrible monster, hidden in the shadows, grabbing its prey by the ankles and dragging them into the dark, inky blackness of the unknown horrors of certain doom. It's Strong Dog. It's just the meme Strong Dog. There wasn't even a satisfying reveal. There was just a scene, and he was there. It was very disappointing. But anyway, back to Arlo's father. Just as Arlo is being taken away by the hillbillies, suddenly there is a flying figure soaring across the auditorium. It's Ansel! He's... He's... Part... Bird? He's got... Bird wings? And bird legs. He's a bird guy. And... In order to accumulate his fortune, he had to hide that he was a bird man. But then he had a child, Arlo. But he could not keep him, because having an alligator child would out him as a bird man? So instead of putting his child up for adoption, he throws him in the New York sewer? He was literally fine with killing a baby and everyone is okay with this and furthermore there were zero repercussions for him when he outed himself as a bird man he still had his money no one even called him a freak he was just i'm a bird man kids were mean to me when i was little so i hid that I was a bird man. Then I got rich, abandoned my newborn baby boy, because I didn't want people to know I was a bird man with an alligator son. I don't know. I don't know. The whole movie falls apart at this point. There are still some very sweet and well done musical numbers. If you watch the movie for anything, watch it for its music. So Ansel wanted to tear down his old neighborhood where the kids were mean to him about being a bird guy, and he wanted to put up some luxurious apartment buildings in its place because he had a dream to tear down the old neighborhood he hated so much. In fact, that's why he became rich, to tear down his old neighborhood. But now that he's outed himself as a bird man and reconnected with his son, who he tried to murder, Ansel now wants to restore the old seaside town instead, and everyone lives happily ever after. I'm pretty disappointed on how little this wonderful array of characters is used. I feel as though we only dipped our toe into the endless possibilities of this cast. I really hope this is just a pilot movie and there's a TV show to follow. I just did two seconds of research and learned that there will be a TV series to follow. I hope this show delves deeper into Birdie's story and reveals more about Arlo's mom, and maybe clears Ansel's name for attempted baby murder. I don't know, but I am curious to see what other adventures this cast of characters has to offer. For now, I do recommend this movie, especially since I now know there is a series to follow. And again, if there's any reason at all to watch this movie, it's for the music. Okay, bye.